Uh, for those of you who don't know, I'm, um, my name is Donato Giancola. I'm a freelance science fiction fantasy illustrator. Uh, I've been painting since 1993 when I began my professional career out of Syracuse. And uh, I guess what I wanted to talk about is when, when I inv was invited here to Gen Con uh, this year, I, I thought about what I would like to do for panels, for presentations. You know, I thought about my own artwork, but then I also had to reflect since Keith passed away this past fall uh, at such an early age, 48, and he had such a huge influence on this market, I thought I, had, I needed to do something. I needed to, to share how much I love Keith's work. Uh, I didn't know him personally very well. I only met him twice, uh, both times uh, here at Gen Con. And so it was a great you know, a privilege to have met the man but, uh, but again, what I, I guess what I'll speak to is how he inf influenced me so greatly in my aesthetics and in my career. Uh, I, mean, I, I was an avid D&D player, and, uh, and that's where I was first exposed to Keith's work, even before I knew who the artists were who were engaged in making so many of those module covers, those dragon covers. Uh, you know, I, I was just, I loved that, those imagery. And I think Keith's work really was hit home for me because of his sense of narration, his sense of realism that he brought to his work. I mean, Keith was an incredibly talented individual. I mean, he worked you know, from doing modules, uh, doing book covers you know, in the fantasy marketplace. I mean, he could do dragons, and he could do science fiction extremely well. Uh, his figure work, his architecture, uh, his sense of lighting, uh, his rendering of different surfaces. I mean. These are all things that you know that you have you have to consider as a, as a painter, and to bring all that together takes an incredible wealth of information and talent. And Keith was able to put that together so well, uh, and so I'm really happy to be able to I guess share that with you. And I think other artists as well who will be coming in and in the audience here now know, you know how much Keith had an impact on their own careers. Here's some more uh, some early work from Keith. I believe this was, a, I think, a personal piece that he had done. But it tells us his sense of storytelling. It's so wonderful. I, you, you, once you, you see this image, and you just know there's a, there's a background to this. You know, they're all like, oh, they're all, those guys running away. I think it was called, uh, is it the, the Dragon's Gold? Or, yeah. Uh, some, yeah, and it's, you know, you know, someone's pissed about having their, 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 their all, you know, the dragon taken from their home. And you know, I don't think it's the guys on the horses who, so it's, you know, but that sense of, you know, there's just a, a depth of, of storytelling here. You know, another beautiful, I mean, so he could do monsters as well as his people. So again, the costuming that Keith has. And that's what I remember, I was uh, working with Sigil Games just recently this year, and they gave me some of Keith, that's where Keith was working, that was a company that he helped found uh, and develop for video games, and they provided me with character designs from Keith to look at. And it was just wonderful seeing the way he costumed and clothed all of his characters. Again, embellishing and adding such a rich history to everything in his work. And his sense, again, all his sensibility of really knowing and getting to know the characters in all of these stories so that you feel like you can know, know them as people, even though obviously this wolf magician here is, is not, necromancer, is, is not human. You can relate to them almost on a human level. So my, some of my, again, I, I guess I mentioned, my early work was in Dungeons and & Dragons, and I, and I think in 1995 or 96, 95 this came out, this is the 96 calendar, and I remember picking this up, and I was just floored by that cover. I, and the, the rendering of the, the steel and the atmosphere of the mountains, uh, I mean, it was just, it was just made my, took my breath away, and it's that, made me want, I wanted to be able to do that. I wanted to learn how to paint like someone like this. Again, I didn't know who this guy was. <laughs> I had no idea who Keith Parkinson was at the time. But I, I just loved the way this guy could paint. And there are other painters in this particular calendar uh, that, are, that are where the, you know, the stand, you know, a lot of the great D&D uh, and role-playing painters. Uh, Jeff Easley just stepped in is back there. I remember Jeff's image from this catalog, it's two, ro uh, I think a robot crushing down uh, the, the, the head of a, a dinosaur. Uh, it was just a beautiful, and I, you know, I looked at that robot and said, I want to paint like that as well. 
And then there's also Clyde Caldwell's pieces in there as well. Great storytelling. Uh, so I loved, you know, again, these, these, this exposure to the art early on helped influence the way I saw the, uh, the, the world and how I uh, have learned about my own aesthetics. Uh, this is a piece I just saw at uh, Sigil Games. Uh, and this is the original painting. And this was, a, again, a, a module for D&D &D that I just adored as a young man. That I, I looked in, the, you know, again, the story, the, the complexity of the dragon's wealth, again, showed re, a, a history and a depth that Keith brought always to his work. And it was a real pleasure to be able to see this in person, see the original artwork. And I didn't realize it was such a small scale as well. And again, some of the book covers. So I actually, as, as Keith also matured as artistically, he started doing more and more book covers. And I kind of, I guess I was right at that age where I was also moving into reading hardbacks and novels uh, as Keith was starting to illustrate more of those as well. So I was, I was maturing as he was maturing as well. You know, as I, I was starting to attend school, attending art school at this point, and looking at his figure work, his sense of composition, and the way that swooping tail of the, 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 the lizard guy kind of brings you back into the night and brings a nice circle composition, a little sea cupping composition around the figure. Uh, uh, just again, so I think I was able to study a lot of Keith's work and develop and add that to my own uh, my own abilities. So I guess also what um, I remember meeting Keith when I first started getting into gaming, uh, I was uh, you know, again I didn't know many of the big names and talents, but I did start to become aware of of those people who I enjoyed looking at. Again, you know, uh, you know Keith, Clyde Caldwell, Larry Elmore. Uh, Jeff Easley, and so they were great role models for me to follow. And after doing some Middle Earth trading card game uh, cards, the the company brought me to Gen Con. I think it was in 1998 or 97 to sign cards for them. And it was there that I met Keith for the first time. I remember seeing him at a booth, and uh, you know, standing there, I was like, "Oh my God, it's Keith, Keith Parkinson's over there." And so I, I eventually got up the nerve and went over to introduce myself and, uh, and told him, you know, I, I'm, a, I'm a young artist, I, I really adored your work. And so we started chatting quite a bit about art and such, and I think we were getting near the closing of the hall that day. Uh, and he was there with Barkley Shaw, and he says, oh, you're doing anything? You want to go out for a drink? And I was like, oh, fucking great, I'm going to go <laughs> have a drink with Keith Parkinson. <laughs> It was just a great. You know, it was just the guy was so warm and so sharing with everything, and I think that's probably what you might hear tonight is how friendly Keith has been to so many people and individuals that he's met. Uh, and uh, and unfortunately, you know, again, I didn't get to know Keith much personally, but uh, you know his art his art lives on uh, through me and th th through everyone else uh, who's here you know, as artists. So I guess I'd like to. Yeah, this is this is actually I think at uh, <laughs> uh, I was just I think that was the next year, but we went out to drinks the next year afterwards. It was just you know the camaraderie that you get from that tight artistic community can I mean, I mean it's it's a wonderful experience and it's one of the great pleasures of being an, a painter is knowing that you can reach out to people like Keith and Larry and Diesel uh, and Butler and, and reach out and talk to these people as individuals and really know. And they'll share, and they share so much. There isn't this competitive edge that's out there in the other business sense, other, other business worlds. And uh, it's, a, you know, again, a real pleasure uh, to have known Keith and, again, to, to, to be able to, to help in, uh, I guess, perpetuating his, uh, his legacy.